Simone, Jonathan, and Sharithra, congratulations on this season. I've already watched it twice now. Huge Bridgerton. Oh, amazing. Yes, I absolutely love the additions of Kate and Edwina this season. You guys absolutely killed it. I spoke with Chris a little while ago, and he did tell me you guys all had chemistry readings. But Simone and Sharithra, I wanted to know, did you guys have a particular sister chemistry read? And what scene did you guys first do together? We did. So I had all of my, my chemistry reads with both Johnny and Simone at the same time, and it was over Zoom, which, you know, oh, wow. like, I did think to myself, oh, God, how is that even going to work? But, like, we really felt it, yeah. even over Zoom. I got goosebumps. I, I mean, I was one of the lucky seven who saw them play opposite each other for the first time. And what they did on Zoom is pinned them. So, you know, you can get the two, and we all disappeared. Oh, and, right. um, and you read the scene. Which the, scene was the it? The scene in episode oh, one, one where we're getting ready for our first ball. Mm -hmm. And I think it is just like, it encompasses their entire sort of sisterly relationship in that one scene. Mm -hmm. So, perfect I so. choice, I think. I think. I love it. Simone, do you want to elaborate? Like, how did it feel to do a chemistry read and also just like via Zoom with like Chris watching you? <laughs> You know, I think um, I, I had a chemistry with Johnny and um, for, for the love story of Kate and Anthony. And we've yeah. spoken so much about, um, you know, the understanding that we immediately had. And I, I left that chemistry just like mega, like this is going to be <laughs> wicked. But yeah, it was um, something really unique and special what Kate and Edwina have. And to do a chemistry with Sharithra, it was a completely different level because it is a different interpretation of love, a love of two um, females, two sisters, um, who are ones there to protect her and actually to learn lessons as we go on throughout the season. Um, but yeah, I... It was just an incredibly special experience, I think. Well, I was going to say, the familial love is the beating heart, really, of Bridgerton. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think. It's, it's yes, Bridgerton yes. is a family. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Well, Jonathan, I spoke with you for season one uh, via yeah. Zoom. We were, like, still in the pandemic. And I don't know if you remember this, but you said that in between the intimacy scenes at the time, you guys would use Diet Cokes. Yeah, to, to like, hurt my nipples. Yes. <laughs> I oh my god so I never forgot that I honestly just wanted to know if you had any like funny behind the scenes moments with you and Simone particularly before like during your intimacy scenes no there's no Specifically, the intimacy scenes. Um, well, I remember what was amazing is the ordering. Like, I remember pizza. just being. Oh I mean, we had a little God. party afterwards. We did, yeah. Had some champagne. We were like 15 minutes before wrap, and I was like ordering the pizza. And they were like, like, "Can we bring it on separate?" Yeah, yeah. Because we the just, moment we, it called cut. You we just had the most exhausting day. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. You know, it's a, yeah. Yeah. It a, it's it's physically quite challenging as well, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of deep breathing. Um, but, but not just on the intimacy scenes. I think there were loads of. I used to prank Johnny all the time. Like play little like oh, oh you did I mean, yeah, she's got so much on her games. phone yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> well, really quick, la last quick question for all of you. A huge theme in this story, Edwina actually says, follow your heart, be true to yourself. And that's really for every character. Who mm. are the people in your life when you first started in this industry to encourage you to follow your dreams? Simone, I'll begin with you, then Jonathan, then Sharithra. Um, I, I'm going to say my mum, because she, she let me do it. Um, That's awesome. I, I was incredibly stubborn and wanted to do whatever I wanted to do. And she, from a very young age, gave me license to do that. Um, so yeah, my mum. Yeah, great question. I think it's like, it is family, isn't it? And family and friends. <laughs> um, and also just there's been amazing theatre directors that I've worked with who have taken me aside and just go, you know, this is going to happen. And, you know, it's about experience is invaluable, isn't it? And like when you get people, like all three of us have got different levels of experience, but yeah. those people who do say you can do it and when, and and also seeing yourself represented on screen is so much a part of that. And that's why we've talked a lot about that today, about how proud we are. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll be able to, by being two South Asian amazing women and a gay out lead, we can sort of show people that it's possible. And that's what our families did for us. For me, um it was probably some of my friends, you know, I think that I never thought that acting was a possibility for me. I just had a lack of knowledge and I guess a lack of vision in that aspect. Um, and it was my friends telling me that it, 
not only that it was possible and not only that you were good, but it's actually like you owe it to yourself. You deserve this. You deserve to kind of follow your heart, um, which is sort of what had been a sister Kate. Um, and then obviously now that I'm like in the industry, my parents are really supportive for kind of getting there. So that's good. That's good. I think that you're <laughs> going to be blowing up after this Friday. Congratulations to the three of you. I cannot wait for fans to see this new season. I literally loved it. I watched it twice. So the chemistry Aww. is insane. Congratulations to the Thank three you. of you. Glad you enjoyed it. It's nice to see you again. Oh my God, Nicola, I love that dress. Thank you so much. It's a Zimmerman there, Australian designer. So pretty. I'm in Selkie. I know you've worn Selkie. I love Selkie. Oh, how gorgeous. I love that. I, I've seen it on your Insta. Um, yeah. I chatted with you for season one a yeah, month I before. I remember your posters. Yeah, yeah. A month yeah. before the show came out. I've seen season two twice. Absolutely obsessed. Congratulations to you on this new season. I love the character of Penn and you so much. Thank um, you. I, okay, so I flipped when you used your natural Irish yeah. accent this season. I wanted to to know is that something that you wanted to put in there or did like Chris or Sean to say oh let's just have her use her natural I Irish accent for this part just curious about that so I think that was a real Chris Van Dusen thing I did not expect it at all I opened up the script and said you know she speaks with this perfect Irish accent I was like okay sure we can we can do that <laughs> and then um Jane English our um our dialect coach I worked with her on it and we sort of we're like, how does she have this? Like, where does this come from? But there was a lot of Irish people sort of in, like, that were working as servers in houses in London around that time. So we imagine this sort of older Irish maid that she had who sort of talked to her in this voice and was maybe sort of a more of a motherly figure than Portia Featherington was. And also she's, you know, she hears everything. So we were like, it would totally make sense that she'd be this mimic. Yeah, no, I, I think that it was like such a cool thing and it happening at the very beginning of the yeah. season to see your character again. Well, I adore Dairy Girls. I Thank love you. Claire so much. I know the season three trailer just dropped. Mm -hmm. I honestly just got me thinking because I was binging it again on Netflix. What would Lady Whistledown write about the Dairy Girls? What would she say about oh, those, those girls? She'd have a field day. I mean, they're absolute disasters, aren't they? She would just write about, you know, behavior on becoming of a lady at a ball or something like that. I feel like they wouldn't last very long at ball. They'd probably, they'd probably get kicked out, wouldn't they? Claire getting tipsy, drinking red wine is my yeah. favorite. <laughs> getting red wine all over her teeth. Yeah, that's absolutely not allowed. Queen Charlotte oh would not approve. Do you think that Penn and Claire would get along? Oh, I feel, no, I feel like <laughs> Claire would annoy Penn. <laughs> I feel like Claire's got a very specific energy that, you know, would probably be quite exhausting yeah. to be around. And I feel like, is she, is she, would she be useful to Penelope? Not really. I don't feel like Claire deals in gossip very much. I feel like she's very practical. <laughs> well, you're so fab in both roles. Like, it's like two totally different women playing the roles, honestly. Oh, Especially when you watch them back to back. I'm like, how is Nicola doing both of these characters? That's very kind. Thank it's you. So, so it's so crazy. Well, I, I spoke with Luke Newton about this. Obviously, we know a lot of fanship, Colin and Penn. I know what happens at the end of season two in the sense of, you know, like Penn has a lot going on, but without giving away too many spoilers, what can you tell the fans? What can potentially, you know, what is going to happen with, with Penn and Colin? What do you hope for their future? I have a lot of hopes for them. I think, you know, I ship it as a relationship massively because I know. there's something so lovely about, you know, them starting off as friends and him not seeing her like that and then it growing into something else. But I feel like she's it reaches a point where I feel like she's got to, if I were her friend, I think firstly I would be like, look at some other guys, like let's just broaden the pool, like plenty of fish in the sea type thing, but that's not gonna work for her. She's like dead set on this guy. Yeah. So I think she, I would say to her again as a friend, like you've got to realize, you know, he's just a human. He's not this God that you've put, you know, you've put him on a pedestal, like let's take him down off the pedestal. Let's see him as a person who's real and has flaws and all this stuff. And you know, you've got to bring yourself up to his level. Cause right now it's like this. So it's got to be here before anything can ever start to happen between them. You know what? I think that's good relationship advice for anyone. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what? So without talking about Colin and Penn, what do you personally hope for Penn's future? Because at the end of season two, there's a lot of things left kind of messy for her. I'm stressed for her at the moment. What do you personally hope, you know, where she's going to find happiness? 
you know, I think my li my list of wants for her is quite long and I don't know how realistic it is because I think she's someone who, she's a very modern woman in a lot of ways and that she wants it all. She wants to have, you know, this column that she writes and she wants to have love and she wants to have, you know, these, you know, intellectual discussions with her best friend about women and women's position in society. So I want her to have all that concurrently, but I don't think she can have it in the way she's currently operating. I think she's convinced herself she can, it's not going to work because she can't lie to the people that she loves. So, you know, I think I would like to see her sort of face up to that a little bit and, and figure it out. Again, I'm so happy I don't have to write it and I don't figure out how that happens, but that's what I would like. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, Nicola, it was so much fun chatting with you. Congratulations on this new season. And I cannot wait for your fans to see this when it drops on Friday because it's so good. I'm ready to binge seasons three and four right now. I just want more of Penelope oh, that's so good. in my life. <laughs> but more of it's coming so don't you worry we're going to be hard at work making more <laughs> yes and so excited for dairy girls the new season congratulations Thank you to so you much. on everything yeah so nice to chat with you again have a great rest of your week and go and off and celebrate thank you so much so good to talk to you good to talk to you bye luke and luke the Hello. easiest names to remember during this yeah. press day <laughs> okay. congratulations to the both of you i've seen season two twice now huge bridgerton fan i know nice. i know Already, already, already. I loved it. I loved it so much. Congratulations to the two of you. I cannot wait for fans to see this show. There, there. Luke Newton, first question for you. Mm -hmm. There's so many fans that ship Penn and Colin, yes. and I'm wondering what you can tell the fans about their friendship and relationship this season and the future of their relationship. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, what's what's really interesting and what I loved about the scripts is that their relationship, you see that there's a shift in their relationship even from episode one and Colin hasn't even returned yet. You know, there's there's multiple references to, they've almost been pen pals while he's been away traveling and their relationship has kind of taken a- Pen pals. Very good. Pen pals. I planned it as well. So yeah. Um, that, they've was, like, that was beautiful, you're, <laughs> a, you. you're a poet. <laughs> I didn't know it. Pen pals. Um, they've taken like a step up in their relationship and as much as maybe that's, that's not good uh, for Penelope in terms of getting carried away with her emotions and Colin not seeing what's right in front of him. There's definitely a shift um, and they see each other in different lights and it's it's really it's been really nice to explore that journey and 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 kind of stretch it out. You know, their their relationship is really stretched out over the whole two seasons. So I'm excited yeah. to see where we where we go with season three. I have no idea, but um, yeah, it's oh going to be God. crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Um, well, obviously, Benedict and Colin act like wingman for Anthony in season one and also season two. Do, have you guys acted as a wingman for your friends or siblings? Because like, I feel like I've been a wing woman for both my guy friends and yeah. my girlfriends. Luke Thompson, I want to begin with you. Um, I don't know. No, I mean, I, th I, don't, I don't think I have actually. No. So it's quite nice to explore that side. That's yeah. the best thing about acting, I guess, is you yeah. get to sort of like just... Be um... someone we're not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, no. don't think, I don't think I'm, I'd be a very good wingman. I feel Why? like I don't think, like I think I'd be too to the point and I'd be like, he's great, isn't he? Like, he's, <laughs> he's brilliant, isn't he? He's like, look how handsome he is. Like, he's great. And they'd be like, this is so obvious. Yeah. I, I'm not very smooth with you like... You did call me a prince earlier. That yeah, was I nice. did. So yeah. maybe I've wingmanned you to all the fans out there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, you guys are so funny. I'm glad you guys are having like a great time chilling in, in the room doing press today. <laughs> yeah, I, I love I love watching it. Um, well, a huge theme of this season is being true to yourself and following your heart. The character of Ed Edwina actually says that. Mm. Who were those people in your life to could, like make you help you follow your dreams when you were first getting into this business? Luke, and any Luke can begin. <laughs> I think uh, both my aunties were musical theatres theatre performers. So growing up, I always I used to go and see them in the theatre from as young as like six years old. Even if the show wasn't quite appropriate for me to go and see, I'd still go and watch it, mm. and absolutely love it. And just fell in love with theatre from a really young age. So I guess I always looked up to them and thought they do this as a job. They get to like play and be characters as a job. So I guess maybe maybe it's maybe that's part of it, and maybe that's the reason why mm. I'm kind of doing what I am today because I grew up watching them play for a job and mm. I was like that's exactly what I want to do so they kind of gave me a really good example of that so yeah yeah no I I love that I love that well I didn't get a chance to chat with either of you for season one and I'm curious you know how different was it 
coming back to set for season two, following the insane success of season one, and also during a pandemic. What was your thoughts? And take me back to set, stepping back on the set that that first couple days of filming. It was incredible. It yeah. was such a strange moment because it was like, so we, we our first scene that we did together was a Bridgerton drawing room scene, yes. I think. So yeah. we were all, it's one of those lovely scenes where we're all in the corner sort of sitting, doing our own thing, and occasionally just being nasty to each other. Yeah. Essentially, that's, <laughs> yeah. those, that's those scenes. And it was strange because it felt like it had been, you know, five years, but it also felt like it had been yesterday. It yeah. was such a strange out-of-body experience. It was like stepping back into a dream. Yeah, genuinely. it really was, yeah. Um, partly, as you say, because of the the, 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 the pandemic, but also just that, um, it, it, well, that, that, that suddenly, like, that drawing room, for example, had mm -hmm. sort of acquired this slight magic yes. from the first season. No, Whereas totally. I think when we went into the first season, it was a bit more sort of, oh, I, uh, you know, we, we don't really know how this is all going to line yeah. up. And so it, it, instead it felt like infused, like suddenly I, even recently going back to the, the actual house, yeah. the house feels different to me now. When I dr yeah. drive to a car and we go to the, the, the where they film the sort of front of the house, you're like, yeah. it's sort of got resonance now because it's and you suddenly think oh people will look at that house and think like, that's means, the Bridgerton house yeah, 100% um, so it just has it, it used, yeah it was mad, magical but also sort of very strange I yeah think, coming back that first yeah. day Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Well, they're wrapping me. Congratulations to the two of you on this season. Like I said, I cannot wait for fans to see it when it drops on Netflix this Friday. I hope you guys celebrate this week and have a great rest of your day. Thank, Thank you very you so much. much. Must speak to you. Thank you both. Hi. Holly and Bessie, huge Bridgerton fan. Congratulations to dreams. the two. I had to do puffy sleeves for Bridgerton. It doesn't compete uh, with what you ladies have to wear, but yes, I had right. to do puffy sleeves. <laughs> I've seen season two twice now. Absolutely wow. obsessed. Yes, yes. I love the characters of Portia and Prudence so much and love that you guys got more time to shine this season. Um, obviously, you know, I, I chatted with a lot of the cast for season one, didn't get a chance to chat with the two of you. I spoke with the cast a month before season one even dropped. I wanted you to take me back to, you know, when season one dropped, all of the insane success following Bridgerton. What was your reactions like during those initial weeks after the show dropped on Netflix? Polly, I'll begin with you. Okay. Um, I was kind of uh, bemused, really. I mean, I was, I always imagine everything I've, I do is going to be an absolute failure. So the, when I saw the huge kind of the success, every time you open a newspaper, every time it's on the television, they were talking about it on chat shows, on, on daytime TV, it was kind of mind blowing. But because we were all still locked away, you know, I yeah. felt very, and had masks on, um, I felt very quite removed from it, you know. Yeah. It, it was a weird s sensation. Normally you'd be like, hey, and you know, walking down the street and, and lapping it up. but. No, it was a weird. Yeah, it was really a weird. weird. One. I we had a, a, a Sonderland had put on a screening for us, so we had this huge mass Zoom, and they'd sent us champagne with these beautiful glasses, and they sent us all a sort of a fascinator, a flowery sort of hat thing, and so we all turned up and had a virtual screening of episodes one and two, which we hadn't seen, I don't think. And it was just, it was beautiful and wonderful that they'd obviously gone to that effort and everything. But then the moment the Zoom is done, as we all know, it's sort of, you go, oh, you are just yourself again. And you're Alone just, in your sitting room. In your sitting room, you've got yeah. the washing up to do and the cat to feed, and then you've got to go to bed. You know, so it, it was a sort of stark, um, um, what's the word? Contrast. Contrast. You know, oh, great, and seeing the numbers on the screen and then, and then just being at home. But then what was nice is then that world starting to open up and we then, you know, found out we we're going to do series two and so we knew we had a job coming up which was also thrilling and that we could see each other and raise a glass in person and that was really nice. I love that. Well I love the Featherington women and without giving away too many spoilers Polly you have an amazing moment this season where you say I am a mother and I loved that sequence so much. I feel like this woman is, even though she has selfish tendencies, she really just is so like that mother bear protecting her daughters. So take me back to, to that sequence. What did, how did you feel that Portia kind of graduated as a person for this new season? I think, I think, I think she was definitely on a journey for sure. And I think questions were posed in, in her life as as to what what roads to go down and and she was 
possibly tempted, I mean, you know, to go down a road that wouldn't necessarily be in everybody's interest. Um, but her heart is is very pure and 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 she is a, a, a devoted mother and mm -hmm. her sense of responsibility and duty overrides her own needs ultimately and I think that is what she delivered at the end. Yeah yeah no I, I totally agree last question for you I felt like a huge like lesson and theme of season two. I think Edwina's character says, you know, be true to yourself and follow your heart. And again, that was like a big theme in season one as well. But I'm curious when each of you started in this business as actors, did you have certain people around you that were saying, follow your dreams, follow your heart, your heart and pursue what you really want to do? Bessie, I want to begin with you. Yeah, my parents. My parents are very, very supportive and my parents uh, are also actors. So they knew the world that I loved. I loved it from the age of five when I did my first school play. I did every kind of, op I took every opportunity I could to act and be in any drama club and drama group. And my parents neither pushed me away from it or pushed me toward it. They just said, if you're happy, we're happy. And I think I feel so privileged to have people in my life who's just said, if you're happy, we're happy. And they said that forever. So yeah, and, and yeah. My parents definitely I'll echo um, what Bess said my mum and dad have been utterly supportive and allowed me to raise children supported me in in looking after them helped me when I couldn't pay my rent um, you know being very very um, supportive and and allowed me to follow my my dreams yeah so I'm I'm hugely grateful I love that answer. Thank you ladies so much for your time. I cannot wait for fans to see the new season when it drops on Friday. Congratulations again to the both of you. Thank, Thank you. Shonda, this is an absolute honor. I was so excited you were on our list today for people to chat with. I'm a huge fan. Bridgerton is one of my favorite shows of all time and season two did not disappoint. So first of all, congratulations to you on, on this incredible series and the new season. Thank you. It's so great to talk to you. Yes, yes. So nice to chat with you too. Like I said, in, se in season one, I was obsessed with Daphne and the Duke being together. They are one of my favorite ships in TV history. Here I felt the exact same with Kate and Anthony. And I was curious for you, I'm sure it's super difficult to answer, but do you have a particular favorite couple that uh, in your series that you like to watch, like Olivia and Fitz, Dr. Gray and Derek? Like, is there a particular favorite couple that Shonda really just enjoys watching? You know, it's always whichever one I'm writing at the time, that's the one I'm really into. But I also have a fondness for all of them. You know, I, I, I'm so addicted and, and like uh, feel so um, responsible for the happiness of all of them. So I, I'm obsessed with them all. Do, were you involved with the chemistry read between Jonathan and Simone for this time around? Yes. How was that? <laughs> you know, it's so exciting to get to see those moments happen when you realize that the sparks are going to be there and you get to see the actors like take off and sort of start to fly. It's just a great, exciting moment. Yeah, I mean, they had incredible, incredible chemistry. Um, well, like a huge theme in this season, I've seen it twice already. Um, Edwina says, you know, to Edwina says, I don't want to give too much away. Follow your heart, be true to yourself. And that's really just an overall theme for this season. So I'm honestly curious, who are those people in your life that encouraged you to follow your dreams and follow your heart? You know, I think I'm really lucky. I'm surrounded by incredible family. I have great friends who are all, who I've known, like my friends are friends I've known since college, but who are all people who really encouraged me to sort of just be myself, follow my heart, do what I need to do. And I'm lucky to have them there because I don't think everybody has those people in their lives. And I wish that everybody did. Yeah, my best girlfriends are from high school, honestly, and they're still in my life. So I totally agree with that statement. Um, I actually just bought your book, Year of Yes, and I left it at my mom's house just now, but I can't wait to read it. I'm sure you get this question all the time, especially from women who are looking to break into the entertainment industry, looking to create and write. What would be your top tip of, of advice if you could give like a top tip of how to kind of do that with their creating and their writing and breaking into the entertainment industry? 
Well, I think I have two. One is that, you know, a writer writes every day. Um, you can't call yourself a writer if you're not writing. So a writer writes every day, even if it's only for five minutes. You know, you can have, you know, four kids and a job and whatever. But so even if it's only for five minutes, a writer writes every day. And my other top tip for any woman in any business is that you belong in every room you are in. Always remember that you belong in that room and to take up space in that room. I love that. And I'm always going to remember that. Um, last question for you, obviously with season two, I'm sure it was very different being on set, you know, with the pandemic. What was it like though, like coming back after the insane success of season one? Because I'm sure that there was like a little bit more comfortability there, but also the pandemic was happening. So talk about just what it was like coming back to set after the insane success and filming during the pandemic. Well, I'm spoiled in that I'm not a person who asked who goes to set. So I'm not generally on set. But, you know, here, I, right now I'm here with everybody. And it is super exciting to sort of be around everybody. And everybody's, you know, been dealing with the pandemic and we didn't get to celebrate the first premiere, you know, the premiere of season one. And we're getting to celebrate the premiere of season two all together. And that's really, really exciting for everybody. Yeah, I remember I, I did the junket for season one and it was also via Zoom, you know, during the pandemic. But I think, you know, it was it was like one of my favorite shows ever to watch. Shonda, this was an honor. Thank you so much. And I hope that you get to celebrate with the cast and Chris and have, you know, enjoy the success of season two, because I think everyone's going to be obsessed when it drops on Friday. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Shonda. I appreciate Congratulations it. Congratulations to you on this second season. I've already watched it twice now. Huge fan of Bridgerton. Yes, yes, huge fan of Bridgerton. I actually spoke with you via Zoom for the, the junket for season one, and it got me thinking. I spoke with you a month before season one even came out. I didn't get a chance to talk to you following the success, so take me back to that moment after season one dropped on Netflix on Christmas, the insane fan fandom response you got and what it was like to just come back to set for season two. The response to the show has just been incredible and, and nothing short of surreal. I, I think, you know, when Netflix sat us down at the end of that first month and told us we were the, their biggest series debut ever, I mean, my jaw just hit the floor. It, it was incredibly overwhelming and exciting and just, just amazing. I think that the show, it's its become this phenomenon, if you will. And I think, oh, you know, yeah. once I saw those memes and those tweets and the recaps and the fact that there's now a musical on TikTok that's Grammy nominated is just, it's amazing. And it's, it's, it's really phenomenal. I'm legitimately so happy for you. I hope you feel very, very proud. I can't wait for the fan reaction with this new season. Um, take me back to the chemistry read between Jonathan and Simone. Was there, in fact, an in-person chemistry read? Talk, talk to me about that. Jonathan, so yes, we, we, we had a chemistry read with Jonathan and Simone, and uh, it was done virtually. Jonathan and Simone were actually in the same room, but uh, myself and the other producers were, were in uh, Los Angeles, and Johnny and Simone were in uh, London. And, you know, to be honest, I was nervous going into that chemistry read because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to feel anything on the other side of the television, on the other side of the computer screen. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm very happy to say that I was completely wrong because they went in there and they just knocked it out of the park and their chemistry is so palpable and it's electrifying and the amount of sexual tension there is in this season is just it's amazing and it's incredible and it's such a fun uh, fantastic journey we're on with the two of them they really make it a slow burn for us this time around, Chris. You make it a slow burn for us, for sure. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, we'll talk, so what was it like coming back to set for season two then, obviously following the success and also during a pandemic? Did you feel, was there like a little less pressure? Was there more pressure? Was it just different filming during the pandemic? I think there's always been, you know, a healthy sense of pressure uh, on this show for me. You know, these books are so beloved by fans across the world, um, and they feel fans of the books feel so passionately and strongly about these characters and these stories. But I think, you know, due to the success of the show, it, it really did raise expectations, and it really did raise our profile going into season two. And I think, you know, it, that made it a very different thing, other than creating and writing and producing, you know, an unknown show. 
but everyone was so excited that first day back on set with everybody. We, we couldn't be more thrilled and we were just happy to be back together. The pandemic was definitely a challenge, you know, shooting through COVID. It required us to really, you know, think of creative ways to bring what people fell in love about with season one into season two. And, and we were able to do that, I think. Yeah, no, I, you guys definitely did. I honestly enjoyed it just as much. Um, I loved the characters of Kate and Edwina. I thought they were exceptional additions this season. Did the two of them have like a sister chemistry read? And what was that like? I'm sure there was just like a lot of pressure to have these two new women on the show, but I thought you guys hit the, the nail on the head with them because they were absolutely amazing together. Uh, yeah, Simone, Ashley, and Sharitha Chandran are are incredible, and and they are so good at what they do, and I can't wait for the world to see them. We we did have a chemistry read with the sisters, and and this season, you know, the the sisterhood and and this story of sisters is just as important as the main romantic story happening between uh, yeah. Kate and Anthony this season, and and that was something really important for me to to flesh out with with my writers in the room. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're wrapping me, Chris. Congratulations to you again. I hope you celebrate all week and I cannot wait for the fan reaction when it drops this Friday on that. Thank you so much. Thanks.